Once goes urban sprawl gave rise to bands like Texas, Simple Minds, and appropriately enough, Wet Wet Wet. Primal Scream can trace their roots here too, as can Edwin Collins, Deacon Blue, and Elemitri. Now something's stirring again, and this time it's coming from the underground. Give me your lies, just leave it to later. The chances were high, but my losses were greater, so I walked home. <laughs> Chemical Underground was started three years ago by local four-piece, the Delgados. Their biggest claim to fame so far is the discovery of sugary punksters Biss. We used the money from our first record to put out the record by Biss, and then their second single went into Top and Pops, and the labels kind of grew from there. All it takes is a couple of phone calls and an awful lot of enthusiasm and a wee bit of money which we all kind of just club together. I, I do the accounts for the label, and I hate accounts. It's, there is nothing in this world I hate more. And uh, I was spending all my time doing all this. I was just totally doing me in. I would consider myself uh, a band member as opposed to a businessman. The label's now home to four other acts, including Arab Strap and Mogwai. Not all are from the Glasgow area and they're bands you may not have heard of yet, but who've charmed the indie music press. There's enough personality and quirkiness within it to give it a bit of grit and a bit of difference, but it's all it's tuneful as well, it's melodic, there's nothing really difficult about it. Underground, I think, speaks to anybody who's lived in a, in a city in anywhere in Britain in the last 20 years. No one's claiming the birth of any kind of Glasgow scene, but as with any big city, there are a lot of people making music and enough venues willing to experiment. Here at the 13th Note, you can often find Mogwine nursing a fruit juice or two. It's good that there isn't really a big industry in Glasgow because the bands go on with making music and aren't, aren't obsessed with getting signed or getting mass media exposure too early. They just really want to go on with it and a lot of people just make records themselves rather than waiting for people to give them ludicrous amounts of money. So it means that by the time lots of people get to hear the bands, they're better than bands that have actually only been going for about two months and have stylists and that kind of nonsense. It's not the new Seattle or anything like that, or the new Manchester, it's just there's a couple of good bands, and because it's not from London, they're not bands that are from London, everyone's like, wait a minute, there's a new centre of music, but uh, there's good bands everywhere, I'm sure, and the same amount of crap bands everywhere as well. Arab Strap are actually leaving Chemical Underground to sign to the beautiful South's label Go Discs, a sign that bigger companies are starting to take note. And there's a blueprint for commercial success in Glasgow, with the original credible indie label Postcard, set up in the wake of punk and home to Edwin Collins' band Orange Juice. Postcard does have such a romantic kind of legendary um, kind of mist over it. You know, it's one of those things. Wouldn't it be great to do something as, as uh, you know, totally influential and release such good records? If you're feeling fond of I think in terms of saying things about Scottish identity, I think it's Chemical Underground does that in a in a kind of unconscious way far more effectively than anybody has since Postcard. However, Postcard's founder, Alan Horn, now believes his vision of a creative indie utopia has been sold down the river. It got to such a daft situation in the 90s where you have groups like Blur, who are on EMI, and Oasis, who are on Sony, albeit licensed through an indie. And these groups are supposedly described as, in, as indie music. Never would I have started the whole thing if I thought it would end up with Oasis. Historically, um, it has always been the case that indie labels have, unfortunately, needed to make compromises with the mainstream record industry. And 
there seems to be an inevitable dilution of what they do. I hope that's not the case. Um, chemical Underground, they should just continue for as long as they feel they have new and different and interesting things to say. I'd like the perception of the label to, to continue to grow and become really the kind of the label that all really, really good aspiring bands want to be on. Russia.